Hi everybody, this is Anne. Just thinking about decorating clay by using the carving technique can be intimidating. It conjures up images of elaborate sculptures or complicated patterns. While sometimes that's the case, it doesn't always have to be. In this video, I'll demonstrate four ways to carve your clay, and the only skill you need is to be able to carve simple lines. Let's start with a simple yet dramatic design with no expensive carving tools. I started with a pot that was leather hard. I also needed a cake decorating bottle that I filled with underglaze. I used the Amico Black, but you can use your favorite color and brand. I tested the underglaze to make sure it flows easily from the tip. I began at the bottom of the pot and squeezed out the underglaze diagonally up and back down all the way around the pot. Now I'm going to carve through the underglaze with a simple bamboo stick. First I use the flat end to drag the underglaze diagonally in the opposite direction from the first lines you made. Next, I used the sharper end of the bamboo stick to carve through the center of the underglaze lines to give even more definition through the tracks. What you get is a dynamic, contemporary line design that creates movement and gives the pot personality. To glaze it, I added a solid black glaze along the top and the bottom bands. I used Georgie's eggshell wash over the underglaze lines and the body for this energetic pot. For this next project, we'll carve through the clay on this leather hard pot. I divided the main body into thirds along with the band at the foot and the rim. For this technique, I used the Diamond Core FP1 tool, but any carving tool can be used resulting in unique designs. Starting in the top section of the main body, I began to carve random diagonal lines only in the center, avoiding the border lines. I carved the entire area, sometimes carving over top of some lines and varying the depth of others to create a variety of line sizes, lengths, and layers. The cuts are shallow enough that I didn't worry about cutting completely through the wall. I made sure that the entire inner band was textured. I wanted to maintain the structure of those border lines for my design. To do this, I took my carving tool and started right along that bottom border line. I carved diagonally upward into the center. I did the same thing along the top border line, starting at the top line, then carving down through the center. To clean up some of the nicks along the borderlines, I gently carved horizontally across the plane. I continued with the same steps in the center section, only in the opposite diagonal direction, still randomly carving, but really trying to maintain the borderlines.
Again, I follow the same steps, switching the direction of my lines along that bottom band. I love the ripple texture and the ruching effect that the random lines give. Now here's one I created earlier where I completed the design. To glaze it, I used baby blue and light green underglazes and brushed them on the surface and wiped them back. I then used Georgie's eggshell wash over the top for an almost waxy look. Switching up from the random lines, I'm going to carve lines that are more orderly and systematic. I use my trimming spinner to divide the piece vertically into eighths, which are indicated by the green marks. I centered the spinner over the top of the piece and marked the rim. To extend those marks down the pot, I set up a laser level which projected a green line vertically along the surface. I lined it up along each mark and traced it lightly down the pot. I measured along the body of the pot and found the center point. I marked it, then marked for a rim and a foot band as well. Using the L ruler again, I traced horizontal lines to form the bands and one line in the center. Now I'll use this thin painter's tape to section off triangles. I started at the bottom of one of the intersections along the band. Then I'll create a line through the center of the next line and follow that to the top of the line next to that. Following those same steps in reverse, I created an X shape with the tape. I continued in this fashion, creating the X's all around the pot. I then took a long strip of tape and marked along the very center line. This gave me a pattern of triangles over the entire surface. Again, using the same diamond core FP1, I began in the center of one of the triangles and cut the clay straight down to the point. I worked my way from the center of each triangle out to each side, turning the tool when I got to the bottom sloped edge of the taped border. I made a point not to overlap any lines, but cut them straight from the top to the bottom, side by side. I was careful to try and line up each line along that tape edge. Now this is what it should look like. Now when I remove the tape, I created this cool corrugated triangle look. If you want to take it a step further, you can eliminate the tape altogether and make the straight cuts. But FYI, this piece was a lot more difficult than I expected because by eliminating the border, these lines transformed into diamonds and visually they needed to look perfect. Making something perfect in clay is very difficult. I experimented with the finish on this one by coating the whole thing with black underglaze, then using a glossy black glaze over every other quarter of the, each diamond. I then used the Georgie's eggshell wash over the top and bottom bands. Tell me in the comments if you have other ideas about how you'd glaze this one. Finally, I thought it'd be fun to mix our random carving with several other decorating techniques. Again, I started on a leather hard pot. I began placing the thin painter's tape randomly all over the surface of the pot and burnishing the tape to the surface for good adherence. I then took the black underglaze and coated the whole piece with a fan brush. I gave it several coats. When the underglaze has lost its shine, you can begin to peel away the tape. I 
did it a little early here and got a little bit of seepage. If the underglaze does bleed under the tape, you can gently scrape those areas to clean it up. I then went back over the rim with a solid coat of underglaze. I did the same thing to the bottom band of the pot. Now I'm going to use this condiment cup to section off circles on the surface. I picked out areas that look cool and traced around the cup. I then switched to smaller circles by using bottle tops of both my Gatorade bottles and water bottles. Once I had as many circles as I wanted, then I used my FP1 to carve all around each circle. I made all my carved lines as vertical as I could, but you could also have sectioned off the pot and carved diagonal lines in each section, like the second project. That would be interesting. The neat thing about this project is that by carving back the clay around each circle, the uncarved areas are still raised and appear to be floating on the surface, while the carved lines still give the piece movement and ripples to float on. I wanted to keep all my border lines crisp. One way to do that was by going back and painting a black border around each circle. Here's one I made earlier. I touched up the borders and cleaned up any burrs when it was bone dry. To finish it, I brushed on Georgie's eggshell wash over the carved areas. I also brushed on shiny black glaze over the black underglazed areas and satin white on the tape resist areas. The more you practice carving, the more confidence you get in how the clay reacts and how the tools behave, and the more complicated your carvings can become. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.